Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing well. So, I welcome you all to the series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics, some finance currents, and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So, before I start with the first question, for all those who are watching this session for the very first time, who have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. Many of you are there who are having doubts as to from where can we download the PDF of this session. So for that, you need to join the Telegram group. Link is in the description below. We provide all the free PDFs on this very group only. You can download these PDFs from there. So now let's move on to the questions. So the first question says, which of the following correctly states the financial year of RBI used for accounting purposes? So recently only the RBI's financial year was changed. Earlier it was from July to June and then it was changed to April to March. So the answer to this question is option D. Why I'm discussing it? Because I'm going to cover one report which has covered the analysis of a nine month period okay so till march the data has been released because last year there was a change in the financial year so earlier we used to account for july to june now we do the accounting for april to march whatever analysis was done under the, that report it was according to the changed financial year so this is the first question the second question relates to the report which i am going to cover let's move ahead to that so the second question says that which of the following is correct as per the annual report of the Ombudsman Schemes 2020-21. So this year ke liye annual report of Ombudsman Scheme has been released. I'm going to cover some of the major highlights of this report which RBI has also highlighted through its notification. Then we'll come back to the question and answer it. So pehle hum kuch major highlights discuss kar lete hai is report ke. Talking about ombudsmen, ombudsmen schemes are basically the schemes which deal with the grievance handling mechanism. The banks are providing various financial services, the NBFCs are providing various financial services, digital platforms are being used to provide the financial services, but there are lots of problems arising. You have a banking service, you have a NBFC service, you have a complaint, a grievance. है. So, the ombudsman schemes basically focus on appointing some senior officials called the ombudsman to address your grievances. You have complaints, handle karna, aapki grievances, ko resolve karna. This is the ombudsman scheme ke under dealt with. And ombudsmen are the ones who are appointed to redress your complaints, redress your grievances. So, a report on the ombudsman scheme has been released which talks about the number of complaints, the volume of complaints which are coming up. Are the ombudsman scheme successful in addressing those complaints? Which types of services are there related to which most of the complaints are arising? So, all that has been highlighted in this report. As I've already mentioned, that this report is prepared for a nine month period from July to March. So, pehle July to June financial year hota tha, ab wo March, April to March kar diya gaya. Isi liye July se March tak ke time period, is nine month ke time period ke liye hi report ka data aya hai. Now, what does this report covers? It covers the activities under three ombudsman schemes. First, under the Banking Ombudsman Scheme, 2006 edition of this scheme is applicable as of now. Then, Ombudsman Scheme for the NBFCs and then the Ombudsman Scheme for the Digital Transactions. So, these three schemes ke under, jo bhi complaints aayi, kitani volume rahi un complaints ki, kitana achha rate ra unko resolve karne ka, in schemes ke under, wo sab is report mein highlighted hai. So, let's move ahead to the major highlights of this report. First of all, talking about the activities under these three schemes, the Banking Ombudsman Scheme, the Ombudsman Scheme for your NBFCs and the Ombudsman Scheme for your Digital Transactions. So, the bank services provide kar hai, the bank service related or uh, the products related uh, complaints are dealt under BOS, then the NBFC related services are dealt under OS, NBFC and any kind of a digital transaction, any prepaid payment instrument related complaint, if it is there, then it is handled under OS DT scheme. So what has been the volume of the complaints over time is year may jo complaints aati hai in schemes ke andar wo increase hui hai ki wo reduce hui hai. The answer to this question is that there has been an increase in the number of complaints received by 22.27%. 
और ज्यादा कंप्लेन आ रहे हैं बैंकिंग एन बी एफ सी और डिजिटल ट्रांजेक्शन रिलेटेड सर्विसेज से सर्विसेज रिलेटेड कंप्लेन आ रही है सो ओवर टाइम वॉल्यूम जो है इन कंप्लेन का वो बड़ा है इस टाइम पीरियड में जिसमें रिपोर्ट ने एनालिसिस किया है ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट टू सेवन परसेंट इंक्रीज हुई है कंप्लेन सो विच स्कीम इज देयर अंडर विच द मेजर कंप्लेन आर अराइजिंग सो बैंकिंग ओम्बर्समेन स्कीम वो स्कीम है जिससे रिलेटेड सबसे ज्यादा कंप्लेन आ रही है सो बैंकिंग सर्विसेज रिलेटेड कंप्लेन आर दी हाइएस्ट I have the highest percentage of complaints which are coming up as compared to the other two schemes. So, जितनी भी complaints आई है इस time period में 90 percent जो आई है वो BOS को आई है. That means banking related complaints have arisen. Banking services related grievances have come up. 90 percent. Then comes the OS NBFC. That is the NBFC related services have accounted for 9 percent of the grievances and Under OSDT, it's one percent. So, ये है share हर एक scheme की कम का overall volume of complaints में. Then talking about the areas under which the complaints have arisen, major complaints किस चीज से related हैं? So, when I talk about the banking ombudsman scheme, so here the major complaints are related to the ATM, debit cards. to the electronic banking and to the credit card so 90% complaints to bos mein aayi hai wo major share hai overall complaints ka jin mein se maximum complaints are related to atm cards usage of the debit cards then the electronic banking or the mobile banking related complaints and the credit card related issues and talking about os nbfc so here the major complaints have been Uh, uh with regard to non adherence to the various rbi directions to the various fair practices which have been prescribed under the code and then the nbfcs have levied certain charges on the customers without giving them the notice so these are the major areas related to which the complaints have arisen now talking about the disposal rate complaints are arising are these complaints getting disposed of are they getting addressed or not so the rate of disposal of redressing those grievances has improved to 96.59% from 92.7% in the previous year so jo complaints aa rahi hai unko dispose of kiya ja raha hai unko address kiya ja raha hai iska rate improve hua hai and we owe this increase in the disposal rate or the improvement in the disposal rate to the digitization the process have be has become digital the complaint processes the complaint management system has become digital because of which it has become easier to redress the complaints okay so the rate has improved jo disposal ho raha hai un complaints ka grievances redress ki ja rahi hai usme improvement aayi hai digitization ki wajah se then talking about the developments which have happened during this year related to the grievance redressal so two major decisions have been taken or two major initiatives have arisen which department of rbi deals with the customer grievances coming up with the policies in that regard it's the consumer education and protection department consumers ko aware karana unko protect karna unki grievance redress karna ye sab consumer education and protection department jo hai rbi ka wo dekhta hai and it has taken two initiatives to uh, enhance the grievance redressal mechanism one is that it came up with the framework to strengthen this grievance redressal mechanism in bank so unhone ek framework release kiya tha jisse ki banks ka grievance redressal mechanism aur strengthen ho sake aur stronger ho sake where they mentioned about the enhanced disclosures that need to be provided on the customer complaints where they mentioned how the ombudsman can recover the amount from banks if the number of complaints are beyond the average level bahut zyada complaints aa rahi hai to ombudsman usse ke uske against charge karenge banks ko so that banks provide better services uh, in order to prevent paying the cost for the same okay then annual review of the grievance redress mechanisms of banks time to time mechanism ko review kiya jayega if any change is required that change will be brought in to enhance the working of this system and the second and very important initiative which is a recent initiative that you should not forget is the introduction of the integrated ombudsman scheme so retail direct scheme ke sath rbi ne integrated ombudsman scheme bhi release ki thi where all the existing ombudsman schemes the three existing ombudsman schemes were integrated into one scheme so one nation one ombudsman scheme was the objective of the scheme 
रिसेंटली ही आरबीआई इंटीग्रेटेड ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम आई है जिसमें एग्जिस्टिंग ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम्स को इंटीग्रेट किया गया है सो अंडर दिस स्कीम दे हैव आल्सो सेट अप अ सेंट्रल रिसीट एंड प्रोसेसिंग सेंटर टू डील विद द कंप्लेंट्स ओके दे हैव रीवैम्प्ड इट कंसीडरिंग द न्यू स्कीम व्हिच दे हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड ऑल द इनिशिएटिव्स आर बीइंग टेकन टू इंप्रूव द इफेक्टिवनेस इन रिजॉल्विंग द कस्टमर कंप्लेंट सो ये एक इंपॉर्टेंट स्कीम है जो इंट्रोड्यूस हुई है इस ईयर में then coming to the way forward so this is the report till 2021 okay now what further objectives they have in mind from april 2021 to 31st march 2022 many of these have already been taken as well so they further want to in intensify the initiatives which they take to make the consumers more aware to make them financially educated customers ko aur financially educate karna hai unki awareness increase karni hai unhe digital platforms ka use karna sikhana hai efficiently kaise use kiya jaye apni grievances ko kaise redress kiya jaye ye sab sikhana hai there is a need to improve the quality and the speed of the complaint डिस्पोजल सो कंप्लेन मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम के अंदर आपको और क्वालिटी इंप्रूव करनी है स्पीड बढ़ानी है जिससे कि ग्रीवेंसेस जो रिड्रेस हो रही हैं वो और जल्दी प्रॉपर वे में रिड्रेस हो सके अंडरटेक द एनुअल असेसमेंट्स ऑफ द बैंक्स अंडर दिस फ्रेमवर्क रिव्यू देयर फ्रेमवर्क फर्दर कंसोलिडेट द रेगुलेटरी गाइडलाइंस ऑन कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन एंड कंज्यूमर कस्टमर सर्विस सो जैसे कि अभी एज ऑफ नाउ द एग्जिस्टिंग बचमन स्कीम्स वर इंटीग्रेटेड इनटू वन कंसोलिडेटेड इनटू वन टू बेटर एड्रेस द इश्यूज सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ स्टफ इज नीडेड फर्दर एज वेल ऑल राइट नाउ कमिंग बैक टू आवर क्वेश्चन सो व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट फर्स्ट वन से इज आर बी आई इंटीग्रेटेड एग्जिस्टिंग ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम्स इन टू इंटीग्रेटेड ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम ये करेक्ट है सेकेंड कहता है ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम फॉर डिजिटल ट्रांजेक्शन अकाउंटेड फॉर मेजर परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनीज नो नाइनटी परसेंट वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द बैंकिंग ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम सो इट इज इन करेक्ट वॉल्यूम ऑफ कंप्लेन्स रिसीव अंडर ऑल द ओम्बट्समैन स्कीम्स इंक्रीज ये परसेंट का इंक्रीज हुआ है राइट सो फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड आर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द next question and the next topic of the day which says india and uk have launched the formal agreement negotiations contemplating reducing tariffs on most of the items identify this level of regional economic integration which is a pact between two nations only to reduce tariff barriers to import and exports among them so we have to identify the level of the regional integration i took one session recently where i talked about regional economic integrations how nations are becoming more integrated by reducing various tariff and non tariff barriers among them which exist so which type of uh, or which level of regional economic integration is being talked about when i say that india and uk wants to reduce tariff among themselves abhi ye चीज काफी न्यूज में है कि इंडिया और यूके के बीच अग्रीमेंट होगा जिससे कि वो टैरिफ्स आपस में रिमूव करेंगे या रिड्यूस करेंगे ओके सो सून दिस ईयर वी माइट सी अ अग्रीमेंट बिटवीन इंडिया एंड यूके एंड द अग्रीमेंट व्हिच आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इज एन एफटीए अ फ्री ट्रेड एरिया अग्रीमेंट ओके सो अ फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट इज बींग इन नेगोशिएशन रिसेंटली सो दी आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन ए India and UK they have launched the formal negotiations formal free trade agreement negotiations and they want to complete it by the end of 2022 is saal ke end tak ho sakta hai India aur UK ke beech ek free trade agreement ho jaye jisse ki aapas mein dono ke beech jo tariff barriers hai wo kam kare jayenge until then both the countries have are contemplating an interim free trade area which will result in reducing tariff on most of the items so till the time a comprehensive a full fledged fta comes into picture we might soon see a interim free trade area agreement happening between the two nations jab tak ek pura full fledged comprehensive agreement nahi hota tab tak ke liye ek interim agreement kar diya jayega ki kuch products mein kuch services related taxes kam kar diye jaye Uh, okay so this uh, what is being talked about is a free trade agreement where what happens is that the nations agree to reduce the tariff barriers among them jo aapas mein taxes lagaye gaye hain wo kam karne pe focus hota hai to yahan uk aur india apne wohi focus kiya hai isliye hum ise free trade agreement keh rahe hain this is the lowest level of regional economic integration where we just reduce the tariff barriers when along with the reduction in the tariff barriers we have a common external tariff policy that level of integration is a customs union 
moving to a higher level we also allow free mobility of the capital of the services easily ek jagah se dusri jagah pe capital services sab ja sakte hain economic union is a more higher level where we also have a harmonized tax rates common monetary fiscal policy so common policies ban jati hain and the highest level is that of a political union where we have the common government as well all right so as of now we are talking about the free trade agreement now talking about a bit about the agreement what they want to agree upon so both countries have agreed on a early harvest scheme early harvest schemes mean means a limited trade agreement where only some small set of products and services will be there on which the tariffs will be reduced till the time a full fledged agreement comes into picture so they will just uh, focus on areas where both of them are agree okay which are the complementary decisions sensitive issues have been avoided kuch products aise hain jo sensitive hain to a particular nation jis pe wo agree nahi kar pa rahe to usko abhi ke liye bahar rakha jayega jisme dono hi agree kar rahe hain unhi products pe unhi services related taxes kam kiye jayenge and considering this both of the nations have a target of doubling the trade by 2030 all right so double ho jaye trade in do nations ke beech 2030 तक ये ऑब्जेक्टिव है ये टारगेट है इनका वॉट डू बोथ द कंट्रीज वॉन्ट इंडिया को क्या चाहिए इस अग्रीमेंट से किन चीजों पर टैरिफ कम कराना चाहती है इंडिया और यूके को क्या चाहिए सो एज फार एज इंडिया इज कंसर्न इट वॉन्ट्स इनहैंस मोबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोफेशनल इट वॉन्ट्स रिड्यूस फी ऑन द टूरिज्म ऑन द वर्क तो आपको वहां जाने के लिए वीजा चाहिए उसके लिए कॉस्ट इनकर करनी पड़ती है देन यू वॉन्ट द पीपल टू मूव फ्रीली फ्रॉम योर नेशन टू दैट नेशन और फ्रॉम दैट नेशन टू योर्स सो इंडिया वॉन्ट्स दैट मोबिलिटी इट वॉन्ट्स रिड्यूस cost on the visas and then it wants to safeguard the agriculture sector better market access for the vaccines basmati rice wool yarn instant coffee tea premix so ye products agar india unko export kar rahi hai aur wo log us pe tariffs laga rahe hain so india wants them to reduce the barriers the tariff taxes on these products so that india can export more of these products and as far as the uk is concerned it wants to ease wants the ease of doing business so easily uk ki companies india mein aake business kar sake restrictions na ho india mein unko business karne related that is the focus area of uk it wants reduced tariffs on whiskey and british made cars so ye product hai jo kafi zyada export karti hai uk india ko uh, the british made cars and the whiskey and it wants the removal or the reduction in the, the taxes imposed on these products to a greater extent also it wants to remove the barriers on certain services on food and drink on health and medical devices so ye products and services jo british uh, companies ya uk se jo companies hai wo export karti hai india ko aur india un pe taxes lagati hai it wants relaxation on those taxes so these are some goods or services or some areas on uh, which both the country on which both the countries want to reduce the tariff barriers all right so now coming to the significance of fta between india and uk how is it going to help india agar ye fta ho jata hai in do nations ke beech okay ya interim fta bhi ho jata hai usse india ko kya benefit honge first of all when the tariff barriers are reduced then the trade becomes easy so it will promote more of your exports your exports of goods from india will increase not only exports of goods but also some services like it education health care that will improve all right so exports improve honge be it goods be it services then is that india has already existed exited from the rcep jo regional comprehensive economic partnership deal ho rahi thi usme india ne opt out kar liya hai and that's why india is now focusing on having ftas with other nations it won agreements with the us with the european union with the uk and these markets can be a huge market the huge markets for india as far as the exports are concerned so that's why india wants an agreement with uk another advantage which india will get is a strategic advantage that is it is going to get the support from us in any global issue in any international event which comes up aapko agar aap uk ke sath agreement karte ho if uk is supporting you aapka koi bhi global issue hai jisme kisi nation ka aapko support chahiye so uk will be there to provide you that support uk is a member of un security council it's one of the strategic partners for india so it will help provide the support in global issues like stand off with china in ladakh sector or other such issues aapko unke end se support milega so these are few benefits 
Now coming to the last question, which says identify the incorrect statement regarding inflation. So today I am going to cover the December inflation levels. Okay, the data for the December inflation levels, both WPI and CPI is out. Even if you are not aware about that, you can easily answer this question because it focuses more on the concept of WPI and CPI. So let's first discuss that and then we'll come back to the question and answer it. So talking about WPI first, which stands for Wholesale Price Index. CPI stands for the Consumer Price Index, WPI for the Wholesale Price Index. So WPI is an index which tracks the prices of the goods at the wholesale level, at the Monday level, at the factory level. So factory level prices, wholesale level prices are tracked. Okay, so the goods that are sold in bulk, which are traded between the entities or the businesses rather than traded between consumers is WPI. So wholesale level of uh, goods ka prices track karti hai WPI. It measures changes in prices of goods sold in bulk or traded in bulk by the wholesale businesses. Whereas if I talk about the consumer price index, the CPI, it tracks the price of goods as well as the services purchased by consumers. So WPI is of goods ke prices track karti hai. CPI goods or services dono ke hi prices track karti hai. WPI does not cover the transportation costs, the retail margins which get covered under CPI. Now talking about which inflation, uh, which inflation index is being used by RBI for policy purposes. RBI ne monetary policy banani hai, koi or policy banani hai, jiske liye unhe inflation level check karna hai. So, what CPI consider or WPI? The answer is that they consider CPI. But despite of that, RBI cannot ignore WPI completely because the results of WPI will, ult uh, will ultimately seep into that of the CPI as well. So, now coming to the December inflation levels. First, talking about the wholesale price index, the WPI. WPI eased to 13.56% as compared to a record high of 14.23% last November. November mein kaafi high chale gaya tha WPI, 14.23 ho gaya tha, but it has eased to a certain extent to 13.56. But it is still in double digits. So abhi bhi inflation bhoat zata hai, although previous month se compare kare to thoda sa ease hua hai. Now why we have seen an ease in the WPI? 14.23 से कम होके 13.56 क्यों हुआ है? Because we have seen milder inflation in manufacturing, fuel and power sectors. So prices related to manufacturing sector, related to fuel and power that have reduced because of which we have seen a uh, slight decrease in the WPI. But still it is at a really very high level. 13.56 भी बहुत ज़्यादा है. पर ये ज़्यादा क्यों है? Because of the food prices. Food inflation की वजह से अभी भी WPI काफी ज़्यादा है. Last month in November, we saw 4.88% increase, but in December, it increased to the 9.56%. Major reason is the rise in the vegetable prices. So, food prices zada hona hai, ek major reason hai, high WPI ka. But if we compare this WPI with the 2020 levels, pichle saal, same time pe 1.95% inflation tha. Ab dekh rahe, hum double digit mein ho gaya, pichle saal kitna kam tha. So, over time, over a year, we have seen an increase in WPI. And what has contributed to this increase? The rise in the prices of your mineral oils, the basic metals, the crude petroleum, natural gas, chemical products, food products, textile, paper and paper products. Ek saal mein in cheezo ke prices kaafi bade hai, jis way se WPI jo 1.95% tha, wo aaj double digit pe hai. Then coming to the retail inflation level, the CPI. So, retail inflation jumped to 5.59% in December. Pichle month ke mukable increase hua hai. And kafi zada increase hua hai retail inflation mein. It has reached almost the upper tolerance level of RBI. RBI ki tolerance level kya hai? 2 to 6%. So, 5.59 is almost 6%. So, upper tolerance level ke pass pauch kariye. Matlab prices kafi bade hai is mahine. Although it's within the tolerable levels, but it is almost near to the upper band. And... The, it, it can be a key concern area for RBI during its monetary policy decision. So, now RBI will decide monetary policy, it can be that they have to keep in mind that they have to keep in mind rates increase bhi karne pade, but it can still continue with the accommodative stance as far as the growth is the major objective. Now, talking about CPI in November, it was 4.91 and if you compare it with the December last year, at that time also it was 4.59. So why is retail inflation so high? What's the major reason? 
तो मेजर रीजन अगेन हेयर इज फूड इन्फ्लेशन डब्ल्यू पी आई में भी फूड इन्फ्लेशन मेजर रीजन है सी पी आई के केस में भी फूड इन्फ्लेशन ही मेजर रीजन है फूड प्राइजेस कॉन्स्टिट्यूट नियरली हाफ ऑफ योर सी पी आई सो इट इंक्रीज इन नवंबर अबाउट एटीन वन पॉइंट एट सेवन परसेंट एंड देन इन डिसम्बर ऑफ अबाउट फोर पॉइंट जीरो फाइव परसेंट सो ये इंक्रीज ने आपके सी पी आई के इंक्रीज में कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट किया है अदर देन योर हाई फ्यूल प्राइस फूड प्राइजेस देर हैव बीन हाई टेलीकम्युनिकेशन चार्जेस ऑल्सो एंड देर वॉज अ लो बेस ईयर अर्लियर सो जिस वजह से अभी हमें रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन अगर हम पिछले साल से कंपेयर करें तो ज्यादा लग रहा है बट द मेजर रीजन मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर इज द फूड इन्फ्लेशन हेयर एज वेल Now coming back to our question, so we have to identify the incorrect statement. सबसे पहली statement है कि WPI wholesale level inflation indicator है ये सही है. CPI stands for Customer Price Inflation, no Consumer Price Index. So ये incorrect है. RBI uses CPI for policy purposes. This is correct. CPI is retail level inflation indicator. This is correct. CPI tracks both goods and services. This is also correct. So only B is incorrect statement. So answer is option B. This was all for today's session. I hope it was useful for you all. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.